Okay, welcome back everybody. So in this video we're going to be covering ExoCAD's model builder and more specifically making a Geller model. So as I described in the first video, a Geller model is a 3D printed um, an or a 3D printed model that has dies. So rather than something that's pindexed, these dies actually pop into a little slot and a hole um, in the the 3D printed model itself. It has some uh, elements to help you articulate it. You can also buy different articulators uh, that you can attach or glue onto your 3D printed model as well. So let's get started. So after we hit the model creator icon on the ExoCAD opening screen, it's now asking us to import our STL files. So if you follow along with the prompts, it's asking us for our lower jaw. So we just double click on the STL of the lower jaw. Next, it asks us for our antagonist, which is the upper jaw in this case. So here's our screen. Um, you may look at it and say, what the heck is going on? Uh, well, what we're seeing here um, in the screen, and let me first also just talk about some of the commands that you have in ExoCAD. So the right mouse button rotates the model that we're working on. Obviously, the scroll wheel in and out scrolls things left and right. Unlike a lot of software like Mesh Mixer, the uh, middle mouse button only zooms in and out. If you wish to pan or move your model around in space, you can hold down the left and right, right mouse button simultaneously. Now, I'm sorry, um, the middle mouse button, actually, if you hold it down, it'll reset the view to a point where that green mark is. So if you're off, if your model is rotating kind of weird um, and you want to recenter it, just hold down that middle mouse button. So the first uh, box is asking us um, what type of model. And actually, let me just back up for one second. There's two modes within Mesh Mixer that we can use, wizard or expert mode. Wizard mode is more like the uh, sort of the workflow in CIRIC. Um, you're asked to do specific tasks in sequence. Expert mode allows you to bounce around and add different aspects to your model. Um, but in this case here, we're going to stick to the wizard mode until we get to uh, other screens. So, Looking at this model here, um, the uh, wizard is asked us to align our models. Uh, we've got lots of different options here. We have different plates that are sort of pindexed. In this case here, all we want to do is tell the software how thick we want our models to be printed. Now, if you've been printing for a while, you may know that that resin is pretty expensive. And also, large, fat models with big bases take a long time to print. So we're going to go ahead and um, try to minimize the amount of waste that we have. So we're going to click on the option Demo Without Plate. And what that shows us, in essence, is a build place plate pretty similar um, to what you would have on a Form 2 printer or any of the other DLP printers like Moonray. And you can notice that my model is sort of in the center. I can go ahead and grab that and center it into the middle of this build plate. And we know from 3D printing whether the companies tell you or not, you're always going to be most accurate in the center of the build plate. Now this upper and lower um, sort of plates are basically saying how fat you want your model. So if I leave this alone, I'm going to have some pretty thick models. So I can take this little slider here and actually kind of scrunch that down and get it so we don't waste a lot. So anything outside of the build plate here is going to get cut off and we don't need all that extra data. I'll talk to you later on about how you can print an analog model and so obviously in that step uh, we're going to want a thicker base to accommodate our analog. So in the next video we're going to go over sort of marking our margins and making our dies.